Welcome to Mechanism, one of the best, if not the best, mechanical mods in Minecraft. There is a lot to go through, from energy production to machines to this lovely little robot over here, and we're going to go through all of that today. So, without wasting any further time, let's just jump into it. So the very first thing you're going to want to do when you load up Mechanism is go and find some of this lovely osmium ore now the osmium ore is the foundation for mechanism and you will use it to make everything including your very first energy source so all you need to do go and find some you can find them pretty much any level just scattered through the world mine through it with a stone pickaxe or better and collect up your lovely osmium ore you can then go and smelt that ore and make it into an osmium ingot once you've got your osmium ingot you can go and make your heat generator now the heat generator is going to be your very first energy source and pretty much all of these machines that you can see around you are going to need some form of electricity or energy in order to power them. So making an early game energy source is going to help quite a lot. Now how the heat generator works is very, very simple. All you need to do, place it down and then when you go into it, you'll see that there's this box here where you can add any sort of burnable item. In this case, I'm going to use coal. It's going to drain that coal and turn that into lava and the lava is going to generate energy and as you can see now that we've run out of coal the lava's empty we have no more energy generation that is pretty much how every generator works in mechanism you'll use some sort of fuel in order to generate energy and then you can use that energy to power the machines and now that we've got some form of energy we can hook it up to a machine quite simply using some sort of cable and it will power the machine. Don't worry too much about what the machine does, we will go through all of them shortly. That is pretty much mechanism in a nutshell. Get some power, move it across, make some machines. Simple. So let's have a look at some other ways that you can make energy. So we've come outside of our brand new guide house in order to harness the power of the sun with these lovely solar generators. Now, if we have a look at them, you can see that just by being outside, they are passively generating energy. It doesn't generate very much energy, unless, of course, you upgrade that to an advanced solar generator. Now, this has been out for a while and it's only generated five. This we've just put down and it's generating almost 15 already because it has a much higher threshold. Now, regardless of which mod pack you're playing, the more energy output that you're going to get, chances are the more expensive it's going to be to make and in fact you need multiple of these solar generators in order to make the advanced array now if solar power isn't quite your thing you can always use the power of wind and use a lovely wind generator now the wind generator is a little bit strange because it has a weird way of generating energy so we're currently at y level 64 and you can see it's generating a decent amount it's generating more than the solar generator but not more than the advanced one which is quite nice, at least for the early game. However, if we make a platform up here at Y level 128, you'll see the wind generator produces energy much, much quicker. Now that is how you're going to utilize the wind generators. Just a heads up for you Vault Hunters players, you cannot get the wind generator. It has been disabled, or at least it has at the time of recording. So yeah you're going to have to use a different form of generator. So now that we've covered solar and wind, it's time to move on to the slightly more advanced generators that we can make. Now, the first one is the bio generator. This works very, very similar to the heat generator that we looked at before, except instead of feeding it coal, you just need to feed it biofuel now we'll go over how to produce biofuel a little bit later on when we look at the crusher machine but basically it fills this up with bioethanol you can turn it on and it turns that bioethanol into energy nice and simple pretty similar to what we had before now the gas burning one is slightly more difficult in order to get a gas burning generator to work you're going to need some form of gas in this case we're using hydrogen and how are we get in hydrogen we're splitting water into hydrogen and oxygen now overall it's not that dissimilar from the others once it's full of hydrogen you just activate it and it will generate energy 
and you saw how quickly that did that it's because it was so full of hydrogen it just basically immediately generated all of that energy the gas burner produces a lot of energy it's one of the better options before you start hitting things like nuclear reactors which is a little bit too complex for this video but we'll briefly look at them later on but now we have a slight problem because we have a bunch of generators full of energy and nowhere for it to go so that is where the energy cubes come in now this is just a basic energy cube but it can hold 1.6 million units of energy so what we can do is just connect that up nicely with some energy cables and you'll see that this is starting to fill very quickly and it is draining from the generators again this one is producing so much that it just doesn't drain but this energy cube is now completely full what we can then do is we can break this energy cube and then go and put it somewhere over here and then use it to power all of these ones it is basically a portable battery there you go that is energy basically all done the cable that you will use for the energy is this cable here it is called a basic universal cable and that is what you will use to transport all of the energy around and use it to hook up all of your machines there are different forms of this cable and we will look at them a little bit later on when we look at upgrading all of our systems so now we've got a bunch of energy but we don't have much to do with it so now it's time for me to introduce you to these five machines here and these five machines are your basic machines that are going to be the backbone of any farm or system that you want to make first up let's look at the metallurgic infuser this is what you're going to use to create the slightly more advanced materials that you will use to create your more advanced machines so for example if you want to make the advanced solar generator from before you're going to need these infused alloys now really importantly you need to make sure you check the recipe for your infused alloy based on what mod pack you're using because for example in vault hunters you're using chromatic iron and larimar whereas in basic mechanism you'll just be using iron and redstone so make sure that you are checking it depending on what mod pack you are using so all you need to do to create your alloys is go into the metallurgic infuser stick in your normal items and then use some sort of catalyst in this case we're using larimar over time that will transform your chromatic iron or your normal iron into the infused alloys and you can then use those to make more advanced machinery it's a pretty straightforward process and no matter what alloy you're creating it's the same steps check the recipe put in the catalyst put in the item that you're looking to transform and then get out the results as long as you have enough energy to power that system now when you get to things like the reinforced alloy or the atomic alloy they get significantly more expensive and use more expensive ingredients such as diamonds obsidian or in the case of vault hunters echo gems but those more expensive items are used to make more powerful things such as a digital miner or a nuclear reactor those things are awesome but require very very expensive ingredients and these alloys are basically the way that you are gated from progressing without upgrading all of your setup and everything now once you've finished making all of the alloys that you want you might have some excess catalyst now there is no way for you to get this back however if you now need to change to coal for example if you want to turn iron into steel then you're going to need to dump out what's already in there because you can't mix it and then you can stick the coal in that will fill this bar up and then you can transfer the iron into steel over time steel is also one of those basic ingredients that's needed for a lot of machines so make sure that you're checking the recipe for that one so that is basically the metallurgic infuser but now we can get onto the much more exciting machines such as a smelter okay that was a little bit anticlimactic but honestly the energized smelter is actually pretty good all it does is it uses energy to smelt the items instead of using fuel so you don't need to worry about adding coal or building some sort of farm you can just use the power and it will turn your raw iron into iron ingots pretty simple it becomes really useful when it's used as part of a large system of machines so for example if you're needing to smelt a load of iron that you're duplicating yes you can duplicate iron then it will enable you to just do that using the power and you don't have to mess around with all the fuel sources okay something actually fun 
is the Crusher. Now, the Crusher I absolutely love because it has hundreds of uses. That is actually not an exaggeration. There are literally hundreds of different recipes that you can use a Crusher for, but there are a few really important ones that we should go through because they will change everything. First up, if you put some sort of plant into a Crusher, it is going to crush that into biofuel. See? I told you we'd come back to it. And of course, you can use the biofuel in order to fuel the biogenerator. So if you have some sort of plant farm, put it into a crusher, put the crusher straight over there next to the biofuel generator, you then have an unlimited source of energy. Much more importantly than that, though, is you can crush cobblestone down into gravel. And what's even better than that is that you can crush gravel into sand. And sand is extremely useful to be able to mass produce. Everyone knows that you can make a cobblestone generator super, super easily. So if you feed this in, you've now got an infinite amount of sand. And if there was a way to get an infinite amount of gunpowder, well then, you would have yourself an infinite TNT farm. But I wonder how you'd go about getting an infinite amount of gunpowder. That seems like you'd need some sort of mob farm. Oh wait, no, you can just crush flint into gunpowder using a crusher. So now the crusher makes gunpowder and it also makes sand. So essentially the crusher is a TNT making machine. It is fantastic. And then you can use the TNT for entropiniums and things like that with Britannia. And you could just link everything together and it's amazing. And I have used this so much in my survival worlds. I genuinely cannot overstate how good the Crusher is. It can be used for so many things. And it is one of the key ingredients in being able to multiply your ores, which we will move on to slightly later in the video. Okay, that is enough fanboying over the Crusher. It is time to move on to the Enrichment Chamber. Now, what is the Enrichment Chamber used for? Well, it has two uses. The first one, is quite obvious. The main use for it is turning gravel into flint, which you can then crush into gunpowder. Yeah, that's right, we're back on the crusher again. But seriously, it is it is really cool. The other use is for enriching things like coal, and that will give you the enriched carbon. Now, if we take one normal coal and one enriched carbon, because they're basically equivalent, and we go over to the metallurgic infuser. If we put one coal in here, we get 10 millibuckets of carbon. However, if we do an enriched carbon, we get 80 millibuckets of carbon. So it is eight times as efficient to use the enriched versions of the coal, which also works for redstone and diamonds and all of that sort of stuff, than it is to just use the raw varieties. It just makes things a little bit more resource efficient, so it's always worth enriching your stuff before you put it through the infuser, at least when you get to that point in the mid game. Now, once again, there are hundreds of different recipes that you can use. One of the ones I find particularly useful is turning cobble deep slate into normal deep slate, and you can do it vice versa with different blocks, but it can do a lot of things. Just make sure you check through the recipes and see what it can do for you. So that is the enrichment chamber. There is one more machine left to go for the basic ones, and this is kind of a lot more similar to the smelter than it is the crusher or the enrichment chamber, because this one one is the precision sawmill. Now we all know when you normally turn a log into planks you get four planks for every one log. However if you do this with a precision sawmill you will get six planks. So if you're creating a huge tree farm and you just want a load of planks this is going to be quite helpful for you. It can also do things like turning bookshelves back into planks and books and it does the same with things like beds and boats which can be quite useful if you found a bunch of the bookshelves but you then need books for enchanting that can be quite useful but overall the sawmill is nice as like an efficiency thing but it is not massively essential for a lot of the major farms still nice to have though can't complain at that one so those are the basic machines however there is a slight problem and that is they are really, really slow. However, there are many ways that you can upgrade the efficiency of these machines and make the system work much better for you. The most important things are pipes, upgrades, and factories. So let's start with pipes. Let's assume we want to smelt up all of this raw iron. What we'd normally need to do is take a stack, put it in here, wait for it to smelt up, take it out of here, 
put it into that chest. And you just need to do that over and over, which is terribly inefficient. So what you're going to need to do is just link up all of these pipes to the energized smelter. Now, it won't do anything to start with because what you need is this item here called a configurator. The configurator is basically your wrench or magic wand for mechanism, and it will allow you to configure pipes and your machines very, very easily. So first off, this is connected and we don't want that to be connected so we can shift right click a few times to disconnect that and then the same with this side and then we've got the different modes as you can see push and pull so if we use pull from this one that's the big one it will pull items out of this side and send them down the pipes and then for this one if we use push it will then push items from here into this chest as you may notice it's not actually pushing those items out and the reason for that is something called side config when you go into a machine you'll see on this panel here a side config and what this does is it tells you what is happening on each side of the machine. It also has this lovely auto eject option. So currently the left side, the front, the bottom and the top are all set to input. You've got the back for energy and you have the right for output. If we turn auto eject on, you'll see that once an item has been smelted up here, it will be sent out because it is being pushed by this pipe here. Now the easiest way by far to make this work properly is to right click in it, go into the side config and click clear side config. And then we have items going in on the left and going out on the right. And we actually have the energy coming through the bottom, which I've not shown you guys, but that's where it's coming from. And now this will just automatically do it. Over time, we'll get those iron all smelted up. And that'll pretty much work for any machine. You've got the inputs, the outputs, the energy, and make sure that you also check the auto eject. And then there you go, fully automated on there. Now let's look at how to actually make it faster. So when we go into the smelter on the right hand side, there is an upgrade function. Now it will need these little cards here called upgrades and you will be able to craft these using the JEI recipes on there. They're normally reasonably cheap. So the one that we want is the speed upgrade and you'll be able to see that now it is actually moving a little bit quicker. And then if we stack a whole eight of them on, then it will go much much quicker look at that that is so so much faster now this speed is amazing but it comes at a little bit of a cost and that cost is the energy required for it to function so using no upgrades it only uses 20 fe per tick which is not a lot at all but if we put in eight speed upgrades that goes from 20 to 2000 fe per tick so we're actually only running 10 times faster but we're using a hundred times the amount of energy. This can be offset just by using one of these energy upgrades and that will make your machine both more efficient and able to hold more energy. So you've got a little bit more of a buffer. In this case, we go from 8K FE that we can hold on here, stick in eight energy upgrades, and then all of a sudden you're able to hold 80K FE. And this is now dropped down to 200 FE per tick. Still 10 times what it used to be, but that's now in line with the 10 times processing speed that we got from the speed upgrades. They are honestly your main two upgrades that you will be using for pretty much everything. However, there's a couple of upgrades just to go through as well. First up is a filter upgrade. You can stick those on certain machines just to make sure that only certain items go in and out. The muffler upgrade is amazing. You hear the like nice processing sound on here? Well, if we stick some muffler upgrades on them, all of a sudden it's gone. You don't have any processing sound at all, which is super, super nice. You then have your gas upgrade, which makes your gas production machines and your gas utilization machines more efficient. And you also have your anchor upgrade, which will chunk load anything that has the anchor upgrade in it. It's very good for keeping farms running, but just be careful if you're using something like TNT with one of these around because it can cause problems on servers. The final one is a stone generator upgrade. This basically acts as a cobblestone generator and it can just generate it in certain machines if those machines need them to start with. This I've never actually used. I mean, I've experimented with it, but it's never really been that useful, but I'm sure you will find. So if you fully upgraded your machines with all of the upgrades that you can and they're still not fast enough well there is another step 
and that is to turn your basic machines into factories. So your machines have five different levels of factory. You've got your just standard machine. You've then got your basic smelting factory. Now, if you have a look, the normal machine will do one reaction at once, whereas a basic factory will do three. You've then got your advanced smelting factory, which will do five. You've got your elite factory, which will do seven. And then finally, you've got your ultimate factory, which will do nine. So essentially, having an elite factory is the same as having nine normal smelters, and it makes things a lot more compact rather than building massive arrays of all the different machines. Now, the great thing about these as well is they don't inherently use more power. So if we put one stack of raw iron in here then you can see it uses 20 fe per tick the same as we saw over there and then if we go to the ultimate one we can then put it in and it still uses 20 fe per tick however if you click this lovely auto sort button it will run all of the processes in parallel but it will use nine times the amount of energy. These can also be upgraded using the speed and the energy upgrades that we looked at before. So if you have a maxed out ultimate machine, it's going to be running incredibly quickly, but it's also gonna use 18,000 FE per tick. And then if we stick in the usual energy upgrades, it will do 1.8K FE per tick. It is honestly incredibly powerful once you get these fully upgraded factories. However, they are quite expensive and use a lot of the alloy that we looked at before in order to create them. The only other thing to note as well is they do have a lovely redstone button. And this, basically, if you turn it as ignored, it will just always run. If you put it as normal, it'll only run if there's a redstone signal. And if you do it inverted, it will turn off if there's a redstone signal. And this will help out quite a lot in your farms to help you with any overflow issues. You can always put comparators on chests and then they will send out a redstone signal and switch all of your machines off. Remember, be server friendly. So we've looked at upgrades and how to transport both energy and items, but you're gonna to need to know how to transport more than that if you want to be successful in mechanism. If you're wanting to move fluids around like this water, you're going to need a mechanical pipe. So again, you can just set this to output and it will move the fluids for you. Now with this pipe, it actually has a little bit of storage in it. So if this is full, it'll then fill up the pipe and then you can store a little bit in the pipe. That's easier to see when we look at the pressurized tubes for gases, because as you can see, this is actually not storing anything because it's just moving it into this tank which has space but because this purification chamber is full this pipeline now has gas just stored in it and you can use that as like a temporary storage just while things are flowing through there is also this basic thermodynamic conductor but to be completely honest with you as a beginner you won't really use it it's mainly used for transferring heat which comes into play a lot later when you're looking at things like your nuclear reactors there are a couple of niche scenarios but you'll know as soon as you need one because you'll need to be transferring heat now these can also be upgraded just like the factories to advanced elite and ultimate so if we put a stack of blocks in here you can see it very slowly moves across and it's pulling these through at a rate of about two items per second however if we then break this and instead we put those back and go for an elite logistical transporter set that to pull and then all of a sudden that's it that's the entire stack of 64 done it'll move 32 at once and then it will do it at a much higher speed. If you're producing enough materials, but you're still having some sort of bottleneck, it's worth checking your pipes just to make sure that you've got enough capacity to be able to move what you're producing. So that's the basics of mechanism done, but that is not all mechanism has to offer. Let's have a look at some of the setups that you can use to make things a lot more easy for yourself as you run through your modded playthrough, as well as some of the really cool toys that mechanism has to offer, in order to make your gameplay even more fun. So first up, we're gonna look at this iron duplication setup. So we put one stack of raw iron in here and with a little bit of luck, we should be able to turn it into two stacks of iron ingots. Now, while it's processing, let me run you through how it works. So this purification chamber here is what basically makes this work. It will turn one raw iron into two iron clumps and it does that by using oxygen. 
Now, oxygen, as you can imagine, is created by splitting water, or H2O, into two parts hydrogen and one part oxygen. A little bit of basic chemistry for you there. So once it's done that, we can filter out the oxygen and put it straight into the purification chamber. But we can't just smelt up those clumps. It won't work. What we need to do is turn those into dust. And that is what the crusher does. The crusher will turn them into this dirty iron dust. And then we need to purify that a little bit more. So we use an enrichment chamber to turn that into normal iron dust. And then the usual smelter, you could use a normal smelter, but the energized smelter makes the most sense. We'll smelt those into iron ingots. Now, two times in your ore is very, very simple. It does get a lot more complicated once you do three times, four times, and even five times the ores. So you could put one raw iron in and get five ingots out. And this does work with things like chromatic iron for vault hunters. So it's definitely worth looking into. But here we go. The last of it is coming through the system now. So if it's all worked out correctly, we should have exactly two stacks of iron ingots. Perfect. Now, of course, you don't want to be mining for all of that raw iron yourself especially when you have something like the digital miner. So this absolute beast of a machine is going to mean that you never need to mine anything ever again. So if we go into it and set up a config so that it needs to mine just the deep slate iron ore, and then we save that and we set that so that it goes from minus 64 all the way up to 132 radius, we can then go back, we can start it, and it'll tell us there's 472 there and it will slowly just mine all of these up. Now, as long as this is loaded, it will just constantly just run and collect all of that iron for you over time. And again, it can be upgraded using speed and energy upgrades. So if we look now, it's going to very quickly mine those ores up and you can even silk touch them. Now, it tells me there's not enough energy here to be able to do it, but it's still managing to do it. It's just pulling it through a little bit slower than it would. But as you can see, it is just mining these up, and we could pipe these out of the top up here and move them across so that they go straight into this chest, and then we could use that to duplicate those ores and make everything much, much more efficient. Now, the great thing is as well, you can set this to go by mod. So if you want mechanism, Mechanism and it will do everything mechanism you can just tick that save that and then make sure this is turned off yep that is because otherwise it would have mined my entire base um change this down to y level zero click okay and then when we go and start it up it will find all of the different blocks that you use for mechanisms. So the fluorite, the uranium, and it will do the osmium and everything as well. And then you can just gather all of that up. Honestly, one of the best upgrades, but a heads up to all of you Vault Hunters users. This is a separate research, so you need to make sure you've done both of those. And if you're on another mod pack, make sure that you do have access to it. Now, if that wasn't cool enough for you, how about two different types of jetpacks and a mecha suit. How awesome is this? You can literally just fly around as long as you've got enough gas put into this jetpack. It's not quite as kind of glidey. It's more just an up and down thing, but it is still pretty cool. Although, sad news for all of you Vault Hunters players, that's been disabled for you. And speaking of things disabled in Vault Hunters, how about the world's fastest pickaxe? You could just mine straight down, zero problems at all. And just to point out, this is not in creative mode, this is in survival. So you can literally just insta mine basically everything. It is pretty incredible. It used to be available in Vault Hunters 116, it's not anymore, but it's still available in most other mechanism packs. And finally, what mechanism guide would be complete without our little helper bot? He will just follow us around because he's amazing. He could also be used as a crafting table, a bit of extra inventory, a smelter, an anvil, all of this sort of stuff. Look how super cute he is. Helper bot, you are the best. But that is basically it for mechanism. We've gone through all of the basics from the very raw materials all the way up to duplication and some of the cool gadgets that you can get. Now, honestly, this has just scratched the surface of mechanism. It will get you going, don't get me wrong, but there are a lot of toys that you can play with to make things so much better. And if you guys enjoyed it and you want more of a, an advanced mechanism guide, then make sure you leave a comment down below to let me know. And if you do want to see more guides like this, make sure to subscribe 
and become a channel member if you want to help support the channel. Thanks very much for watching everyone. I've been Hellfire Mage. This is our brand new guide house. I hope you've enjoyed it and I will see you next time.